In this video, we will see how to journalize transactions and adjusting entries for the alternative treatment of deferrals. Normally, in case of prepaid expenses, companies debit prepayments to an asset account. In the case of unearned revenue, companies credit a liability account to record the cash received. Some companies use an alternative treatment for deferrals. When a company prepays an expense, it debits that amount to an expense account and when it receives payment for future services, it credits the amount to a revenue account. For a better understanding, we look at the basic relationships of deferrals. In case of prepaid expenses, when companies initially record prepaid expenses as an asset and use it completely, assets will be overstated and expenses will be understated by the end of the period. To adjust this, we debit or increase expense and credit or decrease assets. When companies initially record prepaid expenses as an expense and don't use it completely, assets will be understated and expenses will be overstated by the end of the period. To adjust this, we debit or increase assets and credit or decrease expense. In case of unearned revenues, when companies initially record unearned revenues as a liability and recognize it as revenue at the end of the period, liabilities will be overstated and revenues will be understated. To adjust this, we debit or increase expense and credit or decrease assets. When companies initially record unearned revenues as revenue and remain as unearned at the end of the period, liabilities will be understated and revenues will be overstated. To adjust this, we debit or increase assets and credit or decrease expense. Let's look at an illustration to see how to journalize transactions and adjusting entries for the alternative treatment of deferrals. The transactions occurred in a Visio company during the month of January of the current year are given. A Visio uses an alternative treatment for prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. When the company prepays an expense, it debits that amount to an expense account, and when it receives payment for future services, it credits the amount to a revenue account. We will journalize and post the January transactions and the appropriate adjusting entries required at the end of the month. We will also determine the ending balance in each of the accounts. On January 2nd, the company paid $2,400 for fire insurance protection for the whole year. To record this payment under the alternative method, we debit insurance expense and expense account for $2,400 and credit cash and assets account for the same amount. To post this transaction, we record $2,400 in the debit column of the insurance expense account and $2,400 in the credit column of the cash account. On January 10th, Avizio paid $2,500 for supplies. To record this payment, we debit supplies expense and expense account for $2,500 and credit cash and assets account for the same amount. To post this transaction, we record $2,500 in the debit column of the supplies expense account and $2,500 in the credit column of the cash account. On January 15th, Avizio received $6,500 for services to be performed in the future. To record this unearned revenue, we debit cash, an asset account, for $6,500 and credit service revenue, a revenue account, for the same amount. This transaction is posted to the ledger by recording $6,500 in the debit column of the cash account and $6,500 in the credit column of the service revenue account. Next, let's prepare adjusting entries at the end of January. On January 31st, insurance of one month has expired and equals $200, calculated by dividing $2,400 by 12 months. But insurance expense account is showing a debit balance of $2,400. To adjust this, we increase prepaid insurance and asset account by debiting it for the remaining balance of $2,200 and decrease insurance expense and expense account by crediting it for the same amount. To post this entry, we enter $2,200 in the debt column of the prepaid insurance account and enter $2,200 in the insurance expense account. By deducting $2,200 from $2,400, we compute the ending balance of the insurance expense account to be $200. At the end of the month, supplies of $800 were there on hand, which means that supplies worth of $1,700 were consumed during the month. 
Before the month end adjustment, supplies expense and expense account shows a debit balance of $2,500. Thus, expenses are overstated and assets are understated by $800. To adjust this, we increase supplies by debiting it for $800 and decrease supplies expense by crediting it for the same amount. To post this entry to T accounts, we record $800 in the debit column of the supplies and in the credit column of the supplies expense account. By subtracting $800 from $2,500, we compute the ending balance of supplies expense as $1,700. On July 31st, it is determined that out of $6,500 unearned revenue, $3,000 of the services were performed. To record this, we increase service revenue by debiting it for $3,500 and decrease unearned service revenue by crediting it for the same amount. We post $3,500 on the debit side of the service revenue account and $3,500 on the credit side of the unearned service revenue account. By deducting $3,500 from $6,500, we determine the ending balance to be $3,000. Thus, at the end of the month, the closing balances in prepaid insurance is $2,200, supplies is $800, unearned service revenue is $3,500, Service revenue is $3,000, insurance expense is $200, and supplies expense is $1,700.